So in praise and worship over the last two months, uh, we've looked at the who, the what, the when, the where, and the why. But tonight we're going to look at the how. Amen? Amen. Who? We worship God. Amen? We worship God. God the Father. Amen? Uh, we, uh, what is worship? What is worship? I taught on that before. Uh, worship, uh, we worship God, but what is worship? Uh, worship is how we show God what he is worth to us. Amen? I also explained to you a few weeks ago uh, that when God established the heavens and God established the earth, um, that the devil at the time of the beginning was worship. Remember, Gabriel was the vocal angel and Michael was the warring angel and Lucifer was the worship angel. Remember that? Amen. And so when we worship, we replace him. He's already fired. Amen? Amen. But when we worship, we keep him fired. Hallelujah. Amen. Then uh, we talked about when to worship. We worship all the time. I'm going to teach yeah. a little bit more on that on Sunday. But where do we worship? We worship in the sanctuary. We worship in our cars. We worship in our jobs. Hallelujah. We worship in our relationships. That's when we worship, and we worship everywhere. Somebody say everywhere. Everywhere. Uh, you can you can get up and uh, get off the side of your bed and worship. Uh -huh. uh, you can praise God right there as you're driving down the highway. And I don't know about you, but there have been times and situations where where I've been driving down the road and the worship got real good and I had to pull over. Right. And so you can praise God and worship everywhere and anywhere. Amen? Amen. But why do we worship? We are uh, supposed to worship him because we love him. When we worship and we praise God, we're showing our adoration toward him. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, we also worship, I told you a few minutes ago, that because we fire the devil when we worship. But another reason why we worship is because praise and worship is warfare. Amen. Amen. Let me say that again. Praise and worship is warfare. Turn with me to Judges chapter 1 really fast. Judges chapter 1. Judges chapter 1, and it reads like this. Now after the death of Joshua... After the death of Joshua, the pastor Joshua, mm -hmm. the fighter Joshua, the soldier Joshua, it came to pass that the children of Israel asked the Lord, saying, Who shall go up for us against the Canaanites first to fight against them? And the Lord said, Judah shall go up. Yeah. And so whenever there is trouble in your life, Whenever you are up against an enemy, whenever you are up against a Canaanite, a Perizzite, a, a, a Amalekite, or any type of ite, you ought to allow Judah to go first. Not your feelings, yeah. not your emotions, yeah. right. not your ideals, but Judah, and Judah means praise. Yeah. And the Bible says, look at verse 3. And Judah said unto Simon his brother, Come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I likewise will go with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with them. And Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand, and they slew of them and possessed ten thousand men. Uh, but if you look at verse 1, it says, Who's going to fight the Canaanites? But in verse 4, when Judah went up, not only did they defeat the Canaanites, but they defeated the Parasites. Uh -huh. So when you praise God first, uh -huh. not only will you defeat the enemy you can see, you will defeat the enemy you can't see. Uh -huh. The enemy that's hiding around the corner, uh -huh. the enemy that you were not expecting to go up against. Yes. If you praise God before the blessing, you get some unexpected blessings. Yes. If you praise God before the open door, yes. you get some unexpected open doors. Yes. If you praise God before the healing, you get some unexpected healing, yeah. some unexpected miracles, some yeah. unexpected signs. Who am I preaching yeah. to you tonight? Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. 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 And so tonight we're going to teach on uh, the posture and the position of praise and worship. Is that all right? Amen. All right. I told y'all a few weeks ago that one of the hardest things for a leader to do is get into the right position. But one of the hardest things for anyone to do, whether we are leaders, whether we are servant leaders, whether we are employees, husbands, wives, one of the, the hardest things for anyone to do is to get into the right position. Somebody say position. 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 Position is a place that's occupied or to be occupied. Position, it can be a fortified thing, something that's protected, something that's hard to get to. 
Um, you ever work in a place of employment where you want to get to a certain position, but it's fortified? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, you you want to get to the managerial position, but it seems to be fortified. Oh, yeah. And 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 only people that get hired are the people that have the favor. Yeah. Y'all 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 with me tonight? Right. Yeah. And so sometimes a hard thing to do is to get into the right position, but. A uh, position is not only a place of employment, not only just a place that's fortified, but it's also a situation. Mm. A mm. position can be a situation mm. or, a condi or condition with favorable circumstances. Yeah. I'm going to get to that in a minute. But position is also our mental attitude. All right. Uh huh. Uh, our bodily posture or our body attitude. Position affects our disposition, and our disposition affects our position. Let me explain. Whenever you're going for a new job mm -hmm. and you're on an interview, if you sit back and you sit all relaxed, all right. nine times out of ten, you're not going to get the job. <laughs> If you go into a meeting and your disposition is crazy, nine times out of 10, the meeting ain't gonna go right. right. So our position affects our disposition and our disposition affects our position. Yeah. And one thing that can affect our position with God and our position with our family, our businesses, our professional life is our posture in our position. Yeah, right. So you can get the position, you can get the job, but what about your posture? Come on, come on. You can get the, the marriage, you, you can get the finances, but what about your posture when you have it? Amen? Amen. Posture, um, by definition, in the English definition, is position, but I, I, I believe that posture is something more. Amen. Posture is our stance. If you're taking notes, uh, that's a good place to put a note. It's our stance or our stand on something. Mm. It's our adopted mental, physical, emotional and spiritual position and attitude toward God. You ever meet someone that has bad posture? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, posture is our stance and our position um, on how we reflect our feelings toward God. All right. um, how we reflect our respect toward God. Somebody say, get into the right posture. Get into the right posture. Posture is our response to gravity. Mm. Y'all hear me tonight? Yes. Posture is our response to gravity. Mm. Oh, people of God, most scientists believe that the galaxy's gravitational force that keeps the sun rotating around its proper alignment is because of gravity. But scientists believe that the earth goes around the sun because of gravity. And the moon goes around the earth because of gravity. And they're all working in their proper alignment. Somebody say alignment. alignment. Because of gravity. Yeah. But it is my humble opinion, people of God, that proper posture is what's keeping everything in our universe uh -huh. in place. I yeah. believe that the sun, that the moon, that the stars, that the earth, that the other planets <laughs> and the entire universe are working together properly because of the correct posture they have toward God. Yes. Yes. That's good. The earth rotates properly because of good posture. Mm. Trees keep standing because of good posture. Yes. Animals follow natural protocol because of good posture. Right. I believe oceans and seas and lakes uh, flow in the right direction because of good posture. Yes. I believe mountains stay high because of posture. Yes. And I believe valleys stay low yes. because of posture. Yes. I believe it's because in Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says that in the beginning when God made the heavens and the earth, he separated light from darkness, yes. day from night, the heavens from the earth, the water from the dry land, and it's, it's, it's called a divide. But that divide is posture. Yes. And if our posture is divided, we will be divided from God. Come, Come on, on now. Come on. Wow. Y'all with me tonight? Yes. Yeah, we're with you. What, what is right. posture? Um, I believe that it's a divide and um, how we are divided between God is whether we are a man or a boy. Mm -hmm. A woman or a girl. Oh, God. Mm -hmm. 
spiritually mature or spiritually immature. Yeah. All right. Good posture provides proper alignment with God. It provides a favorable stance in our life, no matter the circumstance. Mm -hmm. And proper posture gives us good position, no matter the condition. Mm. Y'all with me tonight? Mm -hmm. Let me go a little bit further. Say go further. Go, go further. further. I said posture is our response to gravity. Mm -hmm. Trees, when their posture is off, they are bent over. Yeah. Uh -huh. Y'all with me tonight? Yeah. Yes, yeah. In most cases, when you see the elderly bent over, mm -hmm. it's because of a posture issue. Uh -huh. <laughs> In the life of the believer, when we allow guilt and condemnation to get the best of us, my, 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 my. it pushes on our posture. Oh, and we go lower in shame and deeper yes. in guilt and deeper in condemnation. But my Bible says, therefore now, yes. there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus yes. who have the proper yes. posture. Yes. Yes. Um, physically, improper posture or postural dysfunction mm -hmm. for the nerves in the room, uh, that's me, can cause back pain, yeah. neck pain, Illness, imbalance, abnormal cell activity. That's why you sometimes lean over. It can also cause discomfort and disease. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, the right posture can be the difference between osteoporosis and not having it. Yes. Um, I'm, I'm doing health at the same time. Y'all hear me tonight? Uh, proper posture is essential and crucial and absolutely necessary. Yeah. But here's the reason why. If you're writing this, write this down. Proper posture causes less accidents, less injuries, and less falls. Mm -hmm. Proper posture uh -huh, um, allows us to get better rest. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Proper posture allows us to have less emotional difficulty. Mm -hmm. Proper posture gives us stronger muscles. Mm -hmm. Proper posture gives us good balance. Mm -hmm. And proper posture allows us to have better strength in the times of stress. Come on now. That's physical stuff. Mm -hmm. But here is the right spiritual posture. Yeah. The right spiritual posture causes less accidents. Yeah. <laughs> less mm -hmm. injuries. Come on. And less falls. Yeah, yeah. All right. It, proper posture allows us to have less offenses. Uh -huh. Because when my posture is right, I have no time to look at anybody else's posture. Yes. 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 Y'all with me tonight? Yes. Proper spiritual posture causes us to have better rest. Mm -hmm. yes. Rest in Jesus. Because my yes. Bible says he is the God of Israel yes. who never sleeps and he never slumbers so yes. I can go to bed. Yes. Come on. Come on. Proper posture allows us to have less emotional difficulties and more spiritual strength and more spiritual power, meaning that I get over my feelings and I get over being in my feelings when I get into proper posture. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> proper spiritual po posture gives us stronger muscles, stronger spiritual mus muscles in prayer. Stronger muscles in praise and worship. Stronger muscles in our faith. Somebody yeah. say, get in the right posture. Get in the right, in the right posture. posture. Proper posture and proper position gives us good balance. Yeah. Uh, when the devil throws his best shot, if you have the right posture, you won't fall over. Uh, if you get the right posture, not only that, will you not crumble under stress? Because yeah. yeah. you're too busy getting into the right posture. Yes. Yes. Oh. And when you have the right posture, when gravity comes, mm -hmm. ah, when, when, when the, the life, the gravity of life, when the aches and pains come, when, when the grief comes, when the, the unemployment line comes, yeah. when, 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 when the eviction notice comes, when Come the on. sickness yeah, comes, yeah, when yeah. the gravity of life comes, that's when you should have the proper posture. Yeah. Uh, uh, a former first lady, Michelle Obama, said it like this, when they go low, we go high. Yeah. Uh, when the yeah. devil goes low, we are supposed to go high. What, yeah. what does that mean? Yeah. Meaning that when life tries 
to bring me low, uh -huh. my praise goes yeah. high. When life tries to bring me down, my worship yeah. goes high. When the weight of life tries to bring me low, I push higher in my praise. Yeah. And I push higher in my worship. I go further on the prayer call. When yeah. people try to take you low, I dare you to go a little bit high. Yeah. When your co-workers try to take you low, I dare you to go a little bit high. Yeah. If your children Posture, the right position, and the right stance yes. when we are in praise and worship to God. Yes, God. Somebody say stance. Stance. Yes. Those are all synonyms. Position, posture, and stance are all first cousins. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. They may be even siblings. All right. Stance or stand is not just our adopted mental, physical, emotional, spiritual position toward God. But watch me. It's also the position or position or the posture of the body while we're standing. Mm -hmm. It's our body language toward God. The, our stance is standing, and that is the opposite of sitting. Yeah. Y'all gonna follow mm -hmm. me in just yes. a minute. Yes. The proper Position, the proper posture is a stance. And so when we are in worship and when we are in praise, we ought to have a stance. Uh -huh. We ought to have a stand, not a sit. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wow. What I've seen is we praise God and we worship God in a sitting position. Come on, I see it all the time. Instead of standing, we recline. My recline means to lean back instead of lean on. All right. In praise and worship, instead of having a stance, instead of standing, we're relaxed. My God. And when you are relaxed, that means you diminish the force of, you diminish your praise, yes. you diminish your worship. Uh, and I don't want to offend nobody. If you happen to be handicapped and you can't stand, I'm not preaching to you. But if you have all of your life, uh -huh. if yeah. you happen to have all your feet, yeah. if your toes are working properly, yes. when it's time for praise and worship, yes. you ought to make a stand. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So when we are relaxed, when we don't stand, it allows us to be slack toward God. All right. To um, have be slack in our attention and slack in our effort, meaning our praise and worship is lazy. Mm -hmm. Our praise becomes pitiful mm -hmm. and our worship becomes weak. Mm -hmm. Standing helps eliminate distractions. Yes. Yes. So when we're sitting, it's easier to become distracted. All right. Yeah, now we'll be right there. Yes. Um, I was I was never a soldier, but I was in the band. I was in the band for a very long time. I was in the marching band in high school. And when we would perform on the field, when we when it was time to perform in front of the audience, when it was time to shine, we were never sitting. All right. yeah. Because standing eliminates distractions yeah. and it brings it brings power to those who are in the band. Y'all right. with me tonight? Yeah. And so what happens if, if somebody is standing, everybody's standing, but somebody's sitting, yeah. then the attention is on the person that's sitting. That's yeah. Awesome. That's good. That's <laughs> and good. so, it, people of God, it's time for us in praise and worship yeah. to take a stand. Yes. Yes. Y'all with me? Yeah. Okay. So, proper posture, proper stance can lead to the proper position with God and people of God also with man. Turn me to Proverbs chapter 3. So, we're going to walk tonight. Proverbs chapter 3, starting at verse 1. I'm reading from the King Jimmy version. Yes. My son, forget not my law, mm -hmm. but let thine heart keep my commandments. Mm -hmm. When we're talking about praise and worship, here are the commandments. God is a spirit, mm -hmm. and they that worship him must worship him in spirit All right. and in truth. Yeah. Here's another commandment. Let everything uh -huh. yes. that hath breath 
Stand up. Come on. Let let everything <laughs> that has breath get in the proper posture. Let, yes. let everything yes, that has breath <laughs> praise the Lord. Yes, God. Look at verse 2. If you follow the commands of God, if we are obedient, look yes. at verse 2. Mm. Look what it says. Keep my commandments for length of days mm. and low life and peace uh -huh. shall they add to thee. Mm. If you're just obedient wow. and just follow God's commandments, mm -hmm. I was like, God, what does length of days and long life mean? Mm. Meaning not only will I have longevity, yes. but my 24 hours will be so wide. Wow. Wow. I'll be able to get everything done that I need to get done. Yes, God. Yes, God. Then, then not, only, not only longevity, but peace. Yes, my Lord. Will he add? Mm -hmm. So when the devil starts subtracting, mm -hmm. God will start adding peace. Right. Yes. Uh -huh. yes then, then look at verse 3. Then if, if you follow, we follow God's commandments. Yes, God. Then, then it says, let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Yes, yes. Bind them about thy neck. Mm -hmm. Write them upon the tables yes. of thy heart. Yes, Meaning, God says, I'm going to give you mercy yes. when you are merciful. Yes, That's right. Come on. Keep them close. Make it a yoke around your neck yes. so that you don't become judgmental, yes. so that you don't become hard-hearted, yes. so that you don't become mean. Yes. Okay. This is the verse 4. <laughs> so shalt thou find favor mm -hmm. and good understanding in the sight of God mm -hmm. and man. Yes. So basically God said, if you continue to praise me, yes. if you continue to worship me, yes. if you get past your feelings, not only will I give you favor, but I'll send men to give you favor. He says, trust in the Lord yeah. with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Yeah. Meaning, I don't know what's going on, God, but you do, so I trust you. Yeah. I don't know how I'm going to get out of this, but you know how, so I trust you. In all thy ways, oh, yes. acknowledge him. Yes. Acknowledge is another word for praise and worship. Yeah, yeah. In all thy ways, God, you get the glory. Yes. In all thy ways, God, you are magnified. Yes. And he will give me direction, proper position, people of God. Yes. Proper posture, people of God. The right stance, people of God, will give us favor, will give us long life, will give us better days will give us direction, and he'll give us power. Somebody say power. Power. All right. This is where the real teaching comes in. And I'm not even teaching tonight. Not yet. Although the physical posture that a person assumes while praise and worship and prayer um, to God may not seem important to a lot of people, but in the various Languages of God, praise, and worship indicates that our posture is important. Mm -hmm. A lot of people will tell you to just praise God your own way. Mm -hmm. It's okay to just sit there and say nothing. Mm -hmm. It's okay just to sit there and do nothing. But the Hebrew mm -hmm. word for worship mm -hmm. is shaha, mm -hmm. meaning to bow down, yeah. to lie down, or to be brought low before I bring you low. Yeah. That's good. Meaning I'm willing to go low. Yeah. I'm willing to go prostrate. Yeah. I'm willing to be humble yeah. before I'm humiliated. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. My God. Come on. The Hebrew word Hishtahawa, which is another word for worship, means to prostrate oneself. Meaning I lay myself yeah, 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 all the yeah. way yeah. down by myself yeah. before the trouble makes me go down there, before the sickness makes me go down there. Oh, I worship yeah. down there, oh God, so yeah. that when the sickness comes, I'm already down there. Yeah. When the blessing comes, I'm already down yeah. there. When the trouble comes, I'm down there. Yeah. And when the good days, I'm down there. I will yeah. worship God right yeah. there. Somebody Right there. Right, right there. Yeah. Yes, then, prostrate is important to God in worship because the Greek word for praise, proskuneo, mm. means to prostrate oneself. <laughs> so worship and praise means to go low, yes, to go low voluntarily. Yeah. Yes. See, the praise and worship leader should not have to make you go low. Yeah. Should not have to make you lift your hand. Should not have to make you go prostrate. If you're really a praiser, yes. if you're really a worshiper,
Abraham. If you really want to do proskuneo, you'll already be right there. Hallelujah. So the words, the Greek and Hebrew words um, to describe worship, that means that God, God is clear that our physical positions, not just our heart, but if our heart is really in God, then what comes out of our heart should show that we're in God. Yes, you're right. Amen. So physical position assumes that during the act of worship and the act of praise and the act of prayer that God is important. Mm -hmm. Not our cell phones. Ah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not social media. Oh Y'all with me tonight? Yes. Not what is around the corner uh, that you're thinking about, not that you're preparing. Do I go to Luby's mm. or should I try Cheddar's? Mm. Which one's going to be more packed today? Mm. All right, come on, Jesus. Help us. I'm trying to bring it practical. Is that all right? <laughs> come on. Come on. Physical positions in prayer and praise and worship reflect the attitudes toward God. Mm. Our body language toward God reflects our inner attitude toward Him. Mm. Amen. Amen? Amen? So let me ask you, what have you shown God lately? Mm. Mm. What position have you taken during praise and worship? Mm. And so tonight, the last few minutes, I want to teach on the right positions. I haven't done it yet, so this is not a um, correction. This is instruction. Amen. Here are 10 positions and 10 postures of praise and worship. Okay. Prayer is mixed in here too. Y'all ready? Take these notes. The first one, I'm going to go pretty much in alphabetical order, order is Barak, B-A-R-A-K, Barak. And that means to kneel or bow down in order to reverence and adore God out of our heart. Barak, to kneel or bow down to show our reverence and adoration to God from our heart. This implication means that I bless God for him being the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm kneeling out of weakness, for when I am weak, he makes me strong. Yeah. If you need a scriptural reference, Psalm 95 and 6 says, Oh, come, let us worship and barak, bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, uh -huh. our maker. All right. So here's why we barak God. Because he's our maker. Yeah. He's our creator. Yes. He's our builder. Yes. He's our manufacturer. <laughs> he's our constructor. Not our constrictor. All right. He is the potter. We are the clay. Meaning that when the troubles of life try to separate us and try to break us and try to bring us down, the potter is right there to rebuild us, yes. to remake us, yes. to reconstruct us, yes. Yes. to recreate us if he has to. Yes. So the proper position is to kneel or to bow down. And the power you get is to be remade. Yes. I'm, I'm, I'm teaching better than y'all saying amen. Mm -hmm. So the position is to kneel or bow down. Mm -hmm. And what you get, the power from God you get, is to be remade. Mm -hmm. All right? Here's the next position. Karar. K-A-R-A-R. Y'all know this? It's to dance. Mm -hmm. Second Samuel chapter 6, verse 14. And David danced before the Lord yes. with all his might. When David was the king and was trying to bring the glory, y'all know where I'm going. Mm -hmm. yes. Trying to bring, bring the glory to the house of God, to yes. the nation. Yes. The last thing that he did was Quran. Yes. The last thing he did was dance before the Lord. So the position of praise and worship is to dance. Yes. And the response of God, the power of God is the glory. Yes. Let me say that one more time. When you do footwork, ah. <laughs> when you twirl and you whirl, when you happen to have a Baptist fit, when you are in a group where you are dancing, 
blessing yes. before the Lord. That's if you happen to be a mind person, yes. you are doing karar and you're bringing in the glory. Yes. Do I have a few people in the house of God that will testify that when I decided to stomp on the devil's head, yes. God brought down the glory. When I decided to lift my head and whirl a little bit, God brought down his glory. When I decided to dance, no matter how I feel, through the aches and through the pain, the arthritis, when I decided to just keep on dancing for the Lord, he brought down the glory. Y'all yes. with me tonight? Yes. Yes. Then the next one is Shabbat. See, we say these words, but, but do we know what they really mean? We're going to Shabbat God tonight. What does that mean? It means to address God with a loud tongue. Uh -huh. To shout because of triumph because of our adoration toward God. Yes, come on. And when you shout, you are saying that I have confidence mm -hmm. in God's ability. Yes, God. Let me read you two scriptures. Mm -hmm. Psalm 117 mm -hmm. says, Praise the Lord, mm -hmm. all ye nations. Praise him, all ye people, for his merciful kindness is great toward us, mm -hmm. and the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Praise ye the Lord. Psalm 117 in the original text says, Shabbat means to shout before all nations. So even if there's a nation that does not believe God, you keep shouting. Yes. <laughs> even if they take prayer out of school, you keep shouting. Even if you can't praise God in your cubicle, you keep shouting. Uh, when you're in a nation or a place where you can't shout, you just you just Shabbat right there. Yes, But then, but then you may not be able, you may not be able to shout. So when, this is when you shout. Joshua chapter 6 says that all the people were together ready and fighting uh, to go up against the Jericho uh -huh. wall. Right. And, and Joshua said, don't shout until the right time. Yes. Don't shout until we're all together. Yes. Don't shout until we're all walking in the same place. Don't shout just yet. When it looks like the wall isn't going to come down, when it looks like that God is not going to do it, when it looks like it's impossible, when it looks like the healing isn't going to come, joy, yes. victory, and light. So when you clap, you are giving the devil a blow. Mm. Mm -hmm. yeah. When you clap, Hallelujah. you're expressing, I have joy, no matter what you throw at me, enemy. Yes, when you clap, you're saying, I have victory, no matter yes, what. God, God. And when you clap, you bring light into dark places. Yes. Oh. Yes, if you need a scripture, yes. Psalm 47 and 1. Oh, clap your hands, all ye people. Yes. Here it is. 
and shout yes. unto God yes, with the voice of triumph. Yes, because if you've ever been in a, a service where you start clapping, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can't help but yes. to start shouting. Yes. Uh -huh. So when you clap, Woo, sometimes, so most of the time, you can't help but to yes. shout. Yes, because the clapping yes. starts yes. feeling good. And, and the clapping yes. starts saying that I am a winner. Yes. I'm giving the devil a blow. Yes. But I'm going to go ahead and shout for the victory. Yes. I'm going to keep clapping through my pain. Is to triumph, to win, to celebrate because we have a victory, and to rejoice. Yes. Meaning, I got joy again. Thank you, Lord. The devil tried to take it, but I got joy again. Yes. The enemy tried to steal it, but I got joy again. Yes. The rumors tried to take it, but I got joy again. Yes. The slander tried to take it, but I got joy again. Yes. The financial problem tried to take it, but I got joy again. Somebody yes. say joy again. Joy again. Joy again. Joy again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. So, so I want, BLCM and those that are, I want you to know why you do what you do. Yes. Yes. You're not just clapping because it's the right church thing to do. All right. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. You're not just shouting because that's what you hear everybody else doing. Yeah. There is a response from God when yes. we do that. Yes. Yes. The position is to clap. Right. The response is the power of God to win, to triumph, and to have joy again. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Here's the next one. Tehila. Tehillah, T-E-H-I-L-L-A-H. Tehillah is to sing. Mm -hmm. And when you sing, you laud God. Make him bigger and bigger. Mm -hmm. But the Tehillah is not a hymn. It, it's, it's not a, um, a CCM song. It's uh -huh. not a contemporary song. Mm -hmm. Come on. It's a spontaneous song. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a song that you hear this tune and you keep saying the words over and over, mm -hmm. that's a tehillah. Yeah. Yeah. It's when you sing a melody from your heart and then you add words to it. Mm -hmm. It's not rehearsed. Yeah. Y'all, somebody in the room knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's not prepared. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. You're singing, your spirit is singing straight to the spirit of God. Yes, yes. yes. And we can move, you can start with Zamar, I'm going to get to that in a minute, and go right into Hila. Mm -hmm. Meaning you can start with Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound, mm -hmm. and then you go to a song that, that the earth ain't heard yet. Uh -huh. right? They call it a prophetic song. Yeah. Yeah. God calls it Tehillah. Yeah. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so the word Tehillah, you see it in mm -hmm. Psalm 34. We say it all the time. I will bless the Lord at all times. Yes, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. When David wrote that song, it was right after he acted crazy. He had to act crazy to get away from his enemy. Yes, And so sometimes a new song will sound crazy. Yeah. I'm teaching real good, good tonight. Yes, and so he the Bible says that. Um, he started to act mad. David started, David started to act mad, and his enemy drove him away. Yeah. And sometimes a good new song yes. will sound a little bit unusual to the devil yes, because he's not used to that song. Uh -huh. he, he's used to Amazing Grace, yeah. how sweet yeah. the sound. Yeah. He's used to some the songs that we play on the radio. He's used to, yeah. I, I love God. Do you love God? What's wrong yeah. with you? And he's used to that. Yeah. But those songs that he didn't, he wasn't there when they was written. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. That song that's in your heart, he's not used to that and he'll drive you away. You gotta get out of my presence. I don't know what you're saying. You gotta get out of my presence. I don't know what you He's gonna leave your children alone. He's gonna leave your husband alone. He's gonna leave your wife alone. He's gonna leave your finances. I dare you to have a tequila moment. So the position is to sing. And the power says, I survived mm -hmm. the enemy. Right. I accidentally went into his camp. Yeah. But I still survived. Yeah. You ever accidentally slip into the enemy's camp yeah. and you survive? That's when you ought to have a Tahila moment. Right? Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm going to tell on myself. Hallelujah. I remember one time I was driving. It was real late at night. I won't tell you why I was out. And so I was going 
uh, to Whataburger to get some food, and I got pulled over. Mm. I didn't have no insurance. Mm. Lord, I had a license. Come on. Great no mercy, current license. Come on. Um, and uh, the officer pulled me over, and uh, she was like, "What's your name?" I told her. She said, "I can't find your license in here." I was like, oh, "You lie, you lie, lie, you tell the truth." <laughs> and I just looked at it, and I, and I said, "I don't have insurance. I really am just going to get food, and I'm gonna go home." And you know what she said? I'm not gonna give you a warning. I'm, I'm gonna follow you and make sure that you get home safe. Oh, so she followed me to get the food. And then she followed me home. Yeah. And all the way to Waterburger, yeah. all the way in the lab, yeah. all the way home, I was doing it to heal. I don't know what I was saying. Yeah. And I was like, Hallelujah, God. Yeah. God bless your name. Thank you for getting me out of this ticket. I could have went to jail tonight. Yeah. I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praise. The next one is <laughs> Tefila. My God. Tefila. Anybody been ever, ever been there, ever been in trouble with the law? Yeah. And you got out of trouble Lord. and you just started singing, you know? Come on. Jesus. Next one is uh, Tefila. Uh -huh. Here we go. This is a prayer uh -huh. song as intercession and petition. This is a labor. A labor, somebody say labor. 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 A work of your heart for the kabod of God. Meaning, I'm going to keep praying. I'm going to keep singing and praying. Yeah. I'm going to keep rocking and, yeah. and I'm going to keep waving. I, I'm going to keep rocking from side to side until the glory comes. Yes. Okay? Watch me. Psalm 39 and 12 says, Hear my prayer, mm. O Lord. And give ear unto my cry. Hold not thy peace at my tears. So when you have a real tefillah, you ever been praying and you, the tears just start falling? Yeah. It's not just prayer, but it's a moment of intercession and worship. And so um, uh, apparently when this, when this was written, David was in some trouble. And this particular trouble, no theologian knows what trouble it was. It does, no one knows whether it was when Saul was trying to kill him. Nobody knows whether it was when Absalom was trying to take his job. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows whether it was when his baby died. Mm -hmm. Nobody knows. But what they do know was David was in trouble. Yeah. Right. So when you have an unknown trouble, mm -hmm. when, you, when you have, let me say that again, when you have an unknown trouble, uh -huh. a non-specific uh -huh. problem, yeah. a trouble that you just right. can't articulate, a trouble that you can't explain to your best friend. A trouble that when you and your spouse talk about it, he don't understand or, or she. That kind of trouble is when Tefila comes in. When a prayer and a song comes in and you start rocking it and you're asking God, hear my cry and, and remember my tears. Yes. Oh, Jesus. And so, so uh, the Bible says that um, is clear on the first word. Here. Yeah. And we all know that when God hears, yes. he answers. Yes. So the position in this worship is prayer. Yes. And the power is an answer. Ah, let me say that again. The position is prayer mixed in with praise and worship and some tears. And the power is an answer. I dare you, if you need some answers from God, I dare you to get down on your knees and have a to feel our moment. God, I need you in this situation. I don't know how my daughter's going to get this scholarship. I don't know how my son is going to make it out of jail. I don't know how the lights are going to get paid. But God, I trust you. I keep praying until somebody brings me groceries. I keep praying. Those are the types of prayers Grandma did and, and Big Mama did. That was not a language for it, but it was to feel like. That's it. That's it. All right. All right. Hallelujah. Those are for the intercessors. That one's for the innocence. All right, so then there's Toda. Mm -hmm. Toda. And this is to give worship by the extension of the hand in adoration. And when you extend your hand in adoration, you agree with what has been done 
with what is happening right now and with what will come. Uh -huh. You're agreeing with what God has done, yes, Lord. what God is doing, yes, and with his promises for tomorrow. Yes. What you're saying is, when I extend my hand, I'm reminded that his promises yes, God. Yes, God. are yea yes, and amen. Yes, this particular word, this Torah, is in connection with the sacrifice of praise. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Meaning, I'm going to extend my hands when I feel like hiding. Oh I'm going to extend my hands in agreement with God, even though mm. I, my feelings really disagree. Yes. Oh <laughs> mm. Y'all, that, that, that's a sacrifice. Of, I'm going to lift my hands even though I don't feel good. Yes, that's it. That's I, I'm going to lift my hands even though things don't look too good. Yes. I'm going to lift my hands because I got to go to court on Monday morning. Yes. You, God. This is saying, I, I thank you and I praise you, God, for something I don't even see in the natural right. yet. Yeah. I'm agreeing by faith that it not only it can happen, mm -hmm. but it will happen. Yeah. So when you extend your hand, you're praising God on credit. Oh my God. <laughs> <Wow>. It's good. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. I'm sick. That's really the truth. The doctor gave me a diet. I, I don't feel good. But I lift my hands because by his stripes, yes. Hallelujah. I am healed. Not yes. I will be healed. I Not I might be healed. Yes. But I am healed. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 134 and 2 says to lift your hands in the sanctuary yes. and bless the Lord. Yes. So when you lift your hands, you're also blessing the Lord. So here's another, if you need another scripture, if you need a story behind it, when you get home, read 2 Chronicles chapter 6 and chapter 7. In 2 Chronicles, the Bible um, is describing the story of when Solomon finally got the temple of God finished. And if you ever look at the title in one of your Bibles, it, it talks about prayer and praise. And so here, um, Solomon told our God. The Bible says that Solomon prayed. You hear me? He said, oh, Lord, you have said that you would live in a thick cloud of darkness. Now I have built a glorious temple for you, a place where you can live forever. Then the king turned around to the entire community of Israel, Israel standing. Somebody say standing. Standing. I said standing uh -huh. before him and gave yes. this blessing. Praise the Lord. Yeah. The God of Israel yes. who has kept the promise he made to my dad. Yes. Wow. It took a whole generation, but I still got it. Oh, y'all don't hear me yes, tonight. Yes. So sometimes the blessing may skip you and hit your daughter. It, yes. it may skip you and hit your son. You didn't finish college. Yes. But when you lifted your hands yes. in the sanctuary, yes. God remembered and allowed your baby to finish college. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. That's, that's just chapter 6. Yes. Jesus. But chapter 7 of 2 Chronicles, Chronicles says that when Solomon had finished praying, and after that Israel finished praising, the Bible says that the fire of the Lord fell down from heaven yes. and filled the house of God. Glory. And because the glory was so thick, yes. the psalmist could not sing, the preachers could not preach, the priest could not sacrifice. All they could do was say, Holy, holy, holy. You ever have a situation that when God does it, all you can say is, Holy, holy, holy. It skipped over your mama. Your daddy didn't get to do it. Uh huh. But, okay, this is for me. Holy,
Lift our hands. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. And the power yes. is God is still going to give you a yes. Thank you, Here's the next one. I'm almost done. Glory to you, Jesus. Yada. Yes, sir. Y-A-D. A H. This is also with the extended hand. But this is a confession. This is a confession. Saying, I don't deserve it, but I thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I messed up, but somehow God still cleaned it up. Oh, Jesus. Yes. I don't have all the credentials on the resume. Yeah. But thanks be unto God, I got the job anyway. Yes. Come on. So I yada. Yes. yes. But also, in the Hebrew word yada, it means to throw a stone mm -hmm. or an arrow. So when you yada, when you extend your hand in confession, mm -hmm. you are throwing a stone and you're throwing an arrow. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Okay? Yes, sir. So when Moses lifted up his hand mm -hmm. and his staff over the Red Sea, what he was really doing was throwing a stone. Mm. You ever see, you ever go to the water, you throw a stone and it makes little ripples? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> his, his hands being lifted was so high All right. that it caused the rock to come down and blow. My, my, mm. my, my, my. And caused a ripple effect that was so amazing mm. that it parted the Red Sea. I guess that's too deep. Mercy, Jesus. So when you have a Red Sea Jesus. in front of you, yeah. when you have yeah. trouble in your yeah. way, yeah. I dare Stretch your hands and say, God, I thank you before the Red yes. Sea parts. I, I, I yes. confess that you are God and you're God all yes. by yourself. Hallelujah. Jesus. I hear God. And so the position is an extended hand. Yes. The answer from God is mercy. Yes. See, they should have been caught by Pharaoh. Yeah. Y'all <laughs> uh -huh. don't hear me. Yeah. Pharaoh's chariots was very close. Yeah, they and they should have been caught. Because let's be honest, they wasn't perfect. No. That's right. Oh, come on. Let's be honest, they was already complaining. Yeah. Yeah. Moses, did you bring us here to die? Yeah. We should have stayed in Egypt. So, so Pharaoh should have caught them and took them back. Should've. But Yada, the response is mercy. Yeah. I should have been caught in my yeah. HIV, but mercy. Hallelujah. That's my testimony. Come on. Mercy. Thank you, God. Mercy. Thank you, God. Jesus. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Can y'all give me just a few more minutes? My I'm Lord. Samar. Somebody say Samar. C-A-M-A-R. Yes, Lord. And this one, this is for the psalmists and the musicians that are watching me on Facebook and those that are in the house. This is to pluck the strings of an instrument, to sing, to praise, and to give God a sound of music in a large place. And in a large way. So when you sing, you're giving joy. You're expressing joy with music and music instruments. If you need a scripture, Psalm 33 and 2 says, Praise the Lord with the heart. Sing unto him with psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Remember David, when he was playing before Saul, he brought joy to the tormented yeah. soul of Saul. Mm -hmm. So Zamar can bring peace to a tormented soul. Yes. You ever been in a worship service? And the right song will bring you peace. Yes, yes. Lord. Yes, For me, it's tis so sweet yes, to God. trust in Jesus. Yes. That's all. The, that's all they gotta sing. I ain't gotta. I ain't gotta hit nothing more. That's one of my favorites because it's so mm -hmm. sweet. Yes. All right. Uh, so then, the position is to play an instrument, mm -hmm. and the power is to bring peace. I gotta hurry. Mm -hmm. The last one, and this is this is not an alphabetical order because it's the most powerful. It's Halal. H A L A L. Mm -hmm. It's where we get Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Halal, Yahweh. Yes. Celebrate. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Halal, Yahweh. Yeah. Yeah. Meaning to boast about God. To rave about God. Yes. To celebrate extravagantly about God. To be a spectacle before God. Yes. Mm -hmm. To express our joy before God. And to clamorously look foolish yeah. before God. God. That is an undignified praise. Mm -hmm. 
Hallelujah is an ugly praise. Yeah. Hallelujah allows you, or it, it, this is what may happen. You may not have your 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 eyelashes no more. Come on now. <laughs> the eyebrow that you drew on, Come on. they may wipe off. Come yeah, yeah, on. yeah. The lipstick <laughs> and the liner gone. <laughs> For the brothers in the house, hallelujah. hallelujah. Your shirt is all wrinkled. The jacket is all across yeah. the room. Come on, God. It's just you, and you, you might even have your shoes <laughs> off. You got your good socks right here at the altar. Yes, For the women in the house, the heels, you don't even know where they are. Uh, your, your hair, the, uh, you put it in a good ponytail, but you can't even find a little ponytail hole. Come on. on. That is when hallelujah yes, God. breaks in the house. Yes, God. And hallelujah shows up in Psalm 150. Yes, Pray ye the Lord. Yes, God. Praise yes. God in his sanctuary. My, 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 my. Praise him yes. in the firmament of his power. Yes. Praise him for his mighty acts. Yes. Praise him yes. according to his excellent greatness. Let me fast forward to verse 6. Let everything yes. that has breath hell out, God. Yes. Let everything hallelujah. that can breathe say hallelujah. hallelujah. And so believe that Miriam, when they when they crossed over the Red Sea, people believe, believe that when Miriam grabbed her timbrel, yes, that she was showing Zamar. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> but the original text said that she hallelujah God. Yes. Because she remembered. See, Moses never picked up bye, bye, bye. a rock. Moses never, never was never a slave. Yes. He never had to make bricks oh, without right, straw. Right. He was never told what to do, when to do, how to eat, what to eat. He yes. was never, he never had to endure that. But Miriam remembered yes. that they had to yes. make bricks without straw. Yes. Miriam remembered yes. that they had to carry bricks without cars. Yes. Miriam remembered yes. that they had to take care of their children yes. without much help. Miriam remembered yes. that they tried to kill Moses when he yes. was a baby. Get into position. Get into position. God bless you on tonight. Yes. Hallelujah. Can we give God some?